Hi, my name is Alex Slavik, and I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to verify that your CS350 OS161 installation is correct and further the, show you the usage of CS350 GDB. So the first thing you should do is go to the, if you haven't already done so, go to the CS350 website, follow the assignment information link, scroll down to information, and have a look at links 2 and 3. So link 2 is a uh, step-by-step guide on how to install OS 161 on the undergraduate environment and step 3 is a step-by-step -step guide on how to install the software on your own machine. So I will quickly go through how to install OS 161 on your own machine. Uh, installing it on the undergraduate machine is much more straightforward as you just copy some packages from links that we provide. So if you want to install it on your own machine you of course have to be running some form of uh, Unix-like operating system, so most of, uh, of you will be running Linux of some flavor. Um, and then you just follow these steps. I mean, these are broken down. If you we give you the commands, you can copy and paste these and put them into one of your shells uh, and just follow these steps. So you want to download the packages. Uh, you'll want to install uh, the bin utils uh, to cross compile for the MIPS architecture, uh, set up your shell paths. This is a very important step, and then compile the GCC, GDB, and Sys161. Finally, in step seven, you set up a bunch of shortcuts. Um, this step is also very important because f the the instructions later on rely on these shortcuts to be created. And lastly, you have step eight which has you downloading and extracting the actual uh, code base that we provide to you. Now, when you install, when you're done doing this step, you'll want to follow the link down here. So forget about step nine for now, but you will want to go and follow this link, which will take you to the installation page for the undergraduate system. Scroll down to step three. Now, step three and step four are common to both types of installations. This will actually have you configure uh, OS 161 and make a initial compilation of it and finally show you how to do a test run. So switching over to a shell, let's clear out these shells. Um, I followed the instructions exactly and I have a folder called CS350 OS 161 in my home directory. Now the contents of course are the OS 161 code base and a root folder. Now the root folder will not be there until you do, um, let's see, until you do, is it even given here? Um, right here, until you do this step. This will create all the uh, test cases and, and, and other user land binaries that you will want to run. So I'll show you quickly how to do that because this is a commonly forgotten step. So I want to be in your OS 161 directory, go into the directory of your codebase, go into the folder kernel, finally go into config. Here you'll have a bunch of configuration files. What you'll want to do is run dot slash config and give it the argument AST0, which will configure your uh, kernel to install for uh, assignment 0. Now go up a level and go into the compile folder and the AST0. So the compile folder will have folders for uh, like staging areas for your compilation for each of the assignments uh, that you'll be working on. Okay, finally we will want to do make depend, make, and make install. So this step is the step that will actually create the root folder at the top level directory. Okay, so we have the root folder. Looking at it, it has installed the kernel and made a symlink to the last installed kernel. The next step is to go back to your uh, code base and simply run the make step on the top level here. So this will install all the user land tools that I've mentioned before. Okay, so that's done. Having another look at our root folder. You'll now see that the folder has been populated with all kinds of stuff. We have the includes and libraries and the actual uh, testing uh, test programs, as well as some man pages.
So the only thing that's missing at this point is the sys161 configuration file. This file is, well, the, as the name implies, the configuration file for the simulator. Uh, the place to get a default configuration is from the directory in which you installed the simulator. So if you follow the instructions, it will be in your home directory under sys161. As you can see here, there's the configuration file, so we'll just grab one of those and copy it to the root folder. Okay, so we're good to go. Finally, this is step four of the undergraduate environment um, setup. You will want to run sys161 and pass in the kernel image. And if everything went well, then you will be presented with some startup code, uh, some startup notices. Very important. It will show you right here which assignment this kernel is compiled for, how many times you've compiled it, and then this is already the kernel booting and you have your boot prompt. You can exit the kernel by simply hitting Q, Q and enter, and we're done. In the next part I will show you how GDB can be used to debug your kernel.